Welcome to Cup of Teach. Today, we are going to talk about the components of scientific method. Here are our objectives for today. Identify the components of an investigation, research problem, hypothesis, method for testing hypothesis, and conclusions based on evidence. Differentiate qualitative from quantitative observation. Differentiate observation from inference. What is scientific method? Scientific method is a logical method of solving problem. Scientists follow this method to minimize chances of making mistakes. What are the characteristics of scientific method? They are logical, rational, orderly, and systematic. Scientific method is a logical method of solving problem. Here are the different components or steps in scientific method. First is the identification of the problem. Next, formulation of hypothesis, data collection, experimentation, data analysis, and conclusion. Let us discuss the first step, which is the identification and statement of the problem. So once you have identified the problem that you want to solve, you have to write it in interrogative form or in a form of question. And since it is in a form of question, never forget to write the question mark at the end of every statement. For example, given the same condition, which has the higher solubility, sugar in water or salt in water? The next step is the formulation of hypothesis. Hypothesis is the tentative answer or an uncertain explanation for an observation, phenomenon, or scientific problem that can be tested by further investigation. It is stated in a sentence or a statement which starts with maybe, I think, or using the if and then statement. For example, I think sugar in water has higher solubility than salt in water. After formulating the hypothesis, you are now ready for data collection. This is where you gather everything that you need, including the data and the materials that you will be needing for the experiment. After gathering all the data and preparing all the materials, you are now ready for experimentation. Experimentation is where you design a test and procedure and perform it to find out if the result of the hypothesis is correct. The main purpose of the experimentation is to check whether the hypothesis is true or false. If the result of the experiment does not support the hypothesis being tested, you have to test another hypothesis. The next step is data analysis. The result of the experiment must be presented with reliable data and information. While performing the experiment, you have to carefully collect the data and record the progress of your experiment. Document the results with detailed measurements, descriptions, and observations in the form of notes, journal entries, photos, tables, charts, and graphs. The last step is statement of conclusion. After analyzing the data collected and interpreting them accurately, you have to summarize the result in written form. Use your analysis to answer the original questions. What is the difference between the hypothesis and the conclusion? Hypothesis is only a temporary or tentative answer to the question while the conclusion is the final answer to the original question. That concludes all the six steps in scientific method. Certain methods are used over and over to develop and test scientific ideas. One of these methods is the observation or the gathering of information using the five senses. We have hearing, smelling, sight, touch, and taste. There are two classifications of observation. 
One is qualitative observation and the other one is quantitative observation. Qualitative observation involves descriptions that cannot be expressed with numbers. For example, my sister looks pale and her skin is very hot. Quantitative observation involves numbers or an amount. They are made using measuring tools like ruler, thermometer, and the like. For example, my sister's temperature reading is 40 degrees Celsius. During observation, you are only telling what you are hearing, smelling, seeing, touching, or tasting. But what if you try to connect your observation to your previous knowledge or experiences? Your observation then becomes inference. When you are making inferences, you are explaining the things you observed. Inferences are based on reasoning from what you already know. You make inferences all the time because your brain processes observations and other information so quickly. Let us give an example of observation and inference and try to find out how the two differs. For example, it's night time and I hear my neighbors screaming. Notice in this statement that you are only telling what you are seeing and what you are hearing. But what if you try to explain your observation? Then, you are already making an inference. For example, someone's house is on fire. Why did you think so? Maybe because of your past experience or knowledge wherein you hear people screaming because someone's house is on fire. But you see, inference is not every time correct. Actually, you can make a lot of inferences based on only one observation. See, here are the different inferences that you can make. Someone's house is being robbed. Your neighbors are watching a pageant and our country is winning. Your neighbors are watching a sport and their favorite team is winning. Thank you for watching. That's it for this video. If you learned something here, don't forget to like and subscribe to Cup of Teach. See you on the next lesson. Bye!